There it was, his toy, in the neurosurgery room, as written on the hospital map. It was his first time touching it, but with only a glance he knew. The stall was made for me. It would be a waste to lock it away in such a place. Come along with me. From now on, you shall move as my body. Let us depart. I have a mission to fulfill, a very important one from Mother. To bring happiness to everyone, that is my mission. Isn't that right, Mother? Character select. Alright, so we got, uh, oh my god, I'm gonna try to pronounce these names. Uh, Nadeshiko, oh my god, Kuga, Kugatachi. Alright, age 25, born October 30th of 2087, blood type A, and she is indeed a female. Or we can get uh, Takuma, oh my god, Tsurugi, 25, May 5th of 87, blood type O, and he is a male. <clears throat> Let's see, who do I want to be? This is kind of a hard decision for me, I don't know who I want to be. I mean... I kind of want to be, I mean, if I'm being at all honest, I, I think I want to be the guy because in the, the anime, in the Psychopaths anime, the main character you follow is a woman. So I feel like, move it up, change it up a little bit, we're going to be as a, a guy this time around, I think. Although she does seem interesting. I don't know, I guess we'll pick him. Entered a block scene. Don't tell me what to do. Why had things turned out like this? Oh, okay. This looks like it's the uh, the the kind of the prison thing from that they have in the anime. So I wonder if we're playing as uh is one of the I don't remember what they call them in the anime but the people that have a high crime coefficient or whatever and they uh, they they're kind of like a suicide squad kind of almost if I were to compare them to anything they kind of they get these people with high crime coefficients and uh, have them help out on the police force and they see them as kind of expendable but damn it let me out let me out of here I have to I have to why where did I go wrong such a futile question I had been born and raised in a rural city far away from Tokyo. Huh. Oh, it looks like they give us a... Uh, okay. The civil system judged humans, lead leading them to the path that maximized their future happiness. Education, marriage, employment, anything. So is it gonna... I'm afraid to press anything, like on the controller, because... I don't want to skip any dialogue or anything like that. So, uh... I'll just kind of explain it here, instead of going to into trying to find the menus and stuff like that to do it because the options button doesn't bring up menus or anything it's probably it might be one of the shoulder buttons or something I don't know but um, pretty much what the civil system is is it's uh, pretty much as you're walking through um, I think it's all throughout Japan but let's just use Tokyo as an example like if you're walking down through Tokyo and uh, you know the cameras see you or whatever you're constantly being scanned and they're scanning you to get your pretty much your crime coefficiency number I believe is what they call it and this number is pretty much dictates how likely you are to make or to commit a crime and there's more to the civil system it, they kind of there's a way that the civil system kind of guides you and uh, pushes you through to like how what your education is going to be like what your 
what uh, your best like career would be for you. Um, so it kind of decides a, a lot of things for you. But the main gist of what the anime follows is that the Sybil system scans you, you get the crime coefficient number, and it, the number uh, pretty much determines how likely you are to commit a crime. The higher the number, the worse that you're, like, the higher, the more likely you are to commit a crime, and the lower the number, the more, like, uh, you're not likely to commit a crime, pretty much. And so they have these guns that, uh, that uh, the police can use to point it to point at a person and they can scan you and get your crime coefficient number and uh, if your number is low enough they can't hurt you but if your number is like I believe it was if it was like between a hundred and two hundred or hundred and three hundred uh, the gun turns into like a like a non-lethal mode and then if you're over I can't remember the number exactly. If you're over 200 or 300, they uh, you're very likely to commit some sort of crime, and they can take lethal force against you. So, uh, pretty much the uh, the civil system can pretty much judge you for crimes you haven't even committed yet. So it's actually a really cool concept, and it's kind of like a uh, it kind of has a mix of you know like uh, cyberpunk, uh, like some Minority Report type stuff. Um, if you guys have seen that movie. Um, it's actually a really cool anime. I highly recommend you guys check it out. It, it is a very, uh, you know, wordy, political, story-driven anime. So maybe it's not for everybody, but it is really good. I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, the judgment that had been given to me was to live and die in that rural city. That was fine. It's not like I didn't like it there. But I did regret obeying Sybil. Would, have, would it have been better to go against Sybil's judgment and seek employment in Tokyo after all? I knew it wasn't possible, but I couldn't help but think about it. The world now was a place where one couldn't get a job unless Sybil deemed them suitable. Even if I went against it and came to Tokyo, the only thing I could have expected to happen was to fail finding a job and then becoming homeless. Then again, there was my childhood friend, a Yukari Himakawa. Unlike me, she had the aptitude to study medicine in Tokyo. Such different paths, but I loved her. Yukari, Yukari, what are you up to right now? One day, Yukari just disappeared. It made no sense that she didn't contact her parents or me. So I came to Tokyo, searching for her, but she was nowhere to be found. The school she attended, the place she worked at, I looked everywhere, but nobody knew where she had gone. It was useless. Everyone just said the same thing as I did. One day, Yukari Himakawa just vanished out of thin air. A resignation letter to her employer. That was the last time anyone heard from her. She never handed in her work or popped up out of the blue. As I searched for her, I became reckless. It wasn't long before my hue clouded and my crime coefficient rose. As a result, I became a latent criminal. So pretty much his hue is like... Uh, if I remember right, it's pretty much like a... I could be wrong. Because it's the crime coefficient number that is the most important part. But uh, I believe, like, they have... I might be getting to mix up something else. Because I want to It's been a while since I've seen the... It's been a while since I've seen Psychopaths, so some of the details are a little foggy in my memory. But I believe the hue... I believe they have, like, a bracelet or something that can change colors and it kind of it's kind of like a mood bracelet type thing where it kind of shows like your state of mind or whatever I believe I believe it's along those lines I can't remember that exactly but pretty much the hue corresponds with your crime coefficient number so if your number is higher you're more likely to become a, a latent criminal like they say <laughs> I'm a fool. Such a damn fool. However, my chance at salvation appeared right before my eyes. Oh, hey, this guy. Alright, Takuma 
Tsurugi. I'm, oh my god, Nobuchika Ginoza, or Ginoza, from the MWP SBCID. You have the aptitude to become an enforcer. Interested to work as one? That's what they call them, enforcer. The people with the crime co high crime coefficients that uh, they pretty much use as, as the suicide squad or whatever. And uh, this is actually pretty cool, so I'm guessing this takes place if it is like canon to the anime or whatever. This must take place I'm assuming, at least from here, it, it would have to take place either before or after or sometime in between season one. Because in season, at the end of season one, I think this guy loses an arm and he gets like a robot arm or something like that, I think. I believe that's in season one. That might be in season two, but I think it's season one. No, that, that would have to be season one because it's season two. He becomes an enforcer, so that, that, okay, yeah. So before, after, or during season one. That was my ticket out of hell. Uh, I jumped at the chance and never looked back. So the Public Safety Bureau, huh? This is where I work now? Man, I'm so touched. I've always wanted to be a police detective. Police detective? You mean enforcer. Well, they're more or less the same thing, aren't they, Inspector Ginoza? Both arrest criminals, right? Latent criminals, to be correct. Jeez. How many times does it take for you to understand? Yeah, yeah, latent criminals refer to those above a certain crime coefficient, regardless of whether they have committed a crime or not. Correct? They possess the potential to cause harm to society. The goal of the CID is to apprehend and isolate them before that ever happens. Yeah, like how I used to be. But I was in a good mood, so I kept that thought to myself. Sure, I had dreamed of being a detective since I was a kid, but more importantly, if I was in the PSB, I knew I'd have a better chance of finding out more about Yukari's whereabouts. And for that reason, I was in pretty high spirits. What are you grinning about? Hurry up and move. Alright, alright. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, get adjusted to how this enforcer device works. Mental care is important, so be sure to get used to using the hue checker. It wasn't uncommon to find programs that could check your hue, your own hue, but the PSB's special model was quite unique. It's built into your wrist comms. So I wonder if... Okay, hold on a sec. We're going to take a uno momento. I'm going to grab the... Uh, why am I having issues here? I'm trying to grab the, the case for the cycle pass off my shelf and see if I can find the uh oh, of course not. This didn't come with a manual. Son of a bitch. I was hoping I could find the controls and figure out how uh how to check that. Well, I'll put that back on my shelf. Cause I'm afraid to So like I can do that. Oh! Okay, so I pressed L1. That brings up tips. Okay, so L1, R1 is classify, move cursor. So I need to figure out how to bring up psychopath color. Oh, so is that my... Wait, of course it's not all fun and games. The fact that they issued such a device said a lot about the stress that came with being a detective. Mental care is a personal responsibility, so be diligent. 
go. God damn it. Oh. That, okay. So, I don't want to do arc 2 because that skips it ahead. That changes it from, like, auto to... Okay. Uh, so this is how I can check the dialogue that I missed. Metal Cares, uh, generally good news, it said sternly. He gave me a detailed tutorial about the device. He was really helpful. I checked my hue again. It was way better than before. It's like the first rays of sunlight on a clear morning. Apparently this color is called Nasturtium Orange. See, I, I can press L1 to bring this up, but I can't like exit out of it to go to the like the main menu config load save so I press circle it just exits exits out completely so I don't know so if I wanted to save I would have no idea how to do it yeah I would have no idea how to fucking do it Uh, and I've literally pressed like every button on this controller. What in the hell? Well, this is kind of annoying. I've. Uh, but then again, I shouldn't need that anytime soon. So, how the fuck do you... Oh, it's square. I pressed that before, what the fuck? Ugh, anyway. So, we can figure we got play and sound, we got all that crap, and we got, okay. So, it looks like I can check my hue quickly just by pressing square or whatever. I shit you not, I pressed that before, I know I did, I'm not crazy. Anyway. Hmm? Hey, Inspector Sunomori, uh, where are you taking those two? As we walked down the corridor, Kinoza stopped the three ladies coming from the other direction. I thought the criminal investigation department was full of tough men, but right before me stood a variety of women, gorgeous, cool, and cute. Oh, hey! Okay, so this... The, we're kind of narrowing it down now, so this can't take place before Season 1. Because Season 1 is... Uh, at the beginning of Season 1, Akane starts at this... Uh, you know, the inspection... Or this police force place or whatever. So this takes place either during Season 1, or like... Well, actually, no, this, had, this would have to take place somewhere during Season 1, because I forgot... The ending of season one, so yeah, this will have to take place somewhere between during season one of the anime. Uh, oh, Inspector Ginoza, it seems there's a new sandwich place near the PSB, so Miss Kunizuka and the rest of us are going to grab some lunch. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it. Because I can't remember what the guy looks like, and I never connected the dots until now, but I wonder if the guy that we're playing as is the friend of one of the guys in this, you know, in here, that ends up dying. Or he ends up getting killed. And then that's how he... I believe. Because there's a, there's a police guy in here who had a, a partner that he liked and he got killed and I believe him getting killed made the uh, police guys you know crime coefficiency number go up and then he ends up becoming an enforcer so he goes from police guy to enforcer so and that and they only talk about that at the beginning of season one so I think that's who we're playing as the guy that ends up getting killed maybe I don't remember what he looks like though so I couldn't tell from the picture of our guy if that was who it was or not, but I'm pretty sure that's who it is. 
Uh, I've been wanting to eat there for a while, but it's not like we can leave the premises by ourselves, right? So we asked Akane if she'd go with us. It's true that enforcers must be escorted by an inspector when they leave the premises. However, Sunomori, don't let yourself get too familiar with the enforcers. I happened to, I happened to be leaving for lunch anyway, and having a meal with company tastes better than eating alone. I see. I didn't think there was any need for him to make such a such a bitter face. By the way, who's that man over there? Oh, um, he's a newly assigned enforcer. Takuma Tsurugi, nice to meet you, ladies. Well, aren't you a fine looking man? I'm Shion. Oh my god, Kara no Mori, the analyst. If you want to know more, just come over to the analysis lab anytime. Analysis, examine and review data analysis from street scanners, determine victims' cause of death, and many other things. We work with her a lot. Keep that in mind. Uh, Fuck. I accidentally pressed it, I'm sorry. Uh, Yaoi Kunizuka, an enforcer, just like you. Miss Karanamori, Miss Sunamori, and Miss. Oh my god. Kunizuka. I see. Man, it puts me in really high spirits to get to work with such beautiful faces. Stop, st stop saying stupid things and get a move on. And Sunomori, remember to return before lunch break ends. Ah, yes, understood. Miss Karanomori and Miss Kunizuka, we should get going. See you around, Tsurugi. God damn these Japanese names. This is the office of the SIDS Division 1. We usually operate from here. Hmm, so this place is... The office was less organized than I had expected. I wondered if everyone in here was an enforcer. They all seemed to be doing as they pleased. Huh, this guy's very formal. My name's Takuma Tsurugi, and I've been assigned to the SIS Division 1 as of today. I look forward to working with you all. As I continued to bow, I noticed a middle-aged man who had the presence of a veteran detective stand up from a seat in the back. Oh, this guy. I like this guy, he was awesome. Ah, so you're the new enforcer. Well, as you can see, so long as there's no trouble, we hunting dogs have, have it pretty good. Just take it easy. Just take it easy, you say? And who are you? Let's see. Tomomi Mas Mas Masaoka? God damn it. An enforcer like you. Uh, Shusei Kagari is over there, and Shinya Kogami is the one closest to you. Both of them are enforcers as well. 
Well, let's all get along as fellow enforcers. I noticed a stack of manga piled above Kagari's desk. Could it be? Wow, isn't that a vintage shonen manga? Oh man, I remember this cover. It was one of my favorites. Excited, I pick it up. I always thought I'd only be able to find these in museums, but never thought I'd actually see a real paperback up close, much less hold it. Uh, what is this? Could it be that you're someone who knows your stuff? Yeah, I cried when he fell to his death as he fought the enemy. Hmm, Takuma Tsurugi, was it? We've got much to talk about. I particularly like that part here, when all the rivals band together. Oh, I totally understand. I think I'm going to get along with you really well, Shu. You really know what's up if you read paperback manga. I've gotten into paperback manga recently because of a friend of mine. It was a tough find, though, man. What's that? Are you just like Kagari? Yeah. Yeah, I like retro stuff, or rather just cool stuff, like smoking and mahjong. It just feels manly, like part of a detective's repertoire. Kogami, oh wait. Okay, so we're not playing as that guy then, because that guy, Kogami, is already an enforcer it looks like. So we're not playing as a guy I thought. Because the guy I thought we were playing as was Kogami's, like, friend. But at that point in time, I believe Kogami was still, like... I don't really want to spoil it, but it's in the anime. Kogami was originally, like, a like an actual police guy. But then, the death of his friend, who I believe was an enforcer... Or maybe he wasn't? I believe he was an enforcer, though. Uh, died, and that took a toll on his mind that and it brought up his crime coefficiency, and he couldn't be a police officer anymore, so he ended up being an enforcer. So, uh, we're not playing as that guy. Apparently, we're playing just somewhere in Season 1, it looks like. Uh, hey, Pops, we got ourselves a sucker here. If you can play, then how about we have a game tonight, then? It'll be a welcome party for the new guy. Sounds like a plan. I'd be happy to join. And talk about a game of Mahjong? It's your own free will to have fun with your fellow enforcers, but take your job seriously. Got it. But isn't it lunch break right now? You need to stop always being so tense. A break is necessary every now and then. I have my regular mental therapy session to attend. By the way, where is Kugatachi? If you're looking for Natashiko, she went to water the flowers. I figure she'll be back soon. Watering flowers? That's work hours, you know? Uh, it's lunchtime, dude. That's not work hours. It's a euphemism for going to the restroom. I've never heard that before, but whatever. Uh, uh, that's really misleading. If she went to the restroom, then just say, then just say she went to the restroom. I cannot talk today. What the? 
Due to our roles, there was a gap between inspectors and enforcers, but Kinoza might actually be quite fun. Then again, it was still easier to be with the enforcers. I know they know how to relax. As I thought about such things, a woman entered the office. Hey! Sorry if you were looking for me. Who is that over there? So is she an enforcer too? Well, I would imagine she would be. Because, uh... Um... Kinoza and Akane, I believe, are pretty much the two in charge of this little group or whatever. Oh man, I feel like I might need to sneeze. <clears throat> Oh no, I guess this division is going to have three inspectors in charge. That's interesting. Unless Akane, for this story, isn't in charge of us. Which I don't see that happening, but... So that's pretty cool. We could have played as an enforcer or an inspector. That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, Takuma Tsurugi, a new enforcer who was assigned today. Tsurugi, meet Nadashiko Kugatachi. She's the newly assigned inspector, as well as your superior. Enforcer Tsurugi, I am Kugatachi. When I peered into this woman's cold eyes, I felt a sudden tightness in my heart for some reason. My job is to utilize and monitor you. I see no need to get all friendly, but I expect a minimal level of cooperation and subordination from you that will be